Well, how do you do again? This is Mike McGee, your uh, DVD and Blu-ray reviewer. And I want to welcome Lint Squash 1281 to, to my channel. And if there's anything I can possibly do to entertain you, Mr. Lint Squash, or whoever you are, uh, 1281, please let me know. And I'm here to, uh, now to, uh, to uh, open a re uh, to review a movie that I just ordered. Now. Let's open it up. That's taking long. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. This is what I'm going to review now. You see, tonight or never, I decided to order this. And this is one of the early talkies uh, of Gloria Swanson in the early 30s, but before she would eventually momentarily retire in motion pictures by 1934. And uh, it's, uh, and I got, I got this picture because I'm a fan of uh, early talkies, and I'm a fan of Gloria Swanson films, except for maybe the overplayed, in my opinion, uh, um, Sunset Boulevard. I don't hate it, but they were play it. But um, it's tonight or never. And uh, here's the back cover. Now let's open it up. Okay, now it reads, One of the greatest of all film divas, Gloria Swanson, holds court irresistibly in this spicy 1931 comedy. Here she stars as another sort of diva, a European opera star, in a glittering Samuel Golan production all his trimmings. Tonight or Never features a stunning gal from a Coco Canal, eye-popping cinema photography by imaginatory Greg Tolan who did the Zig who did the Goldwyn Follies of 1938 and uh, an, an elaborate production one of the first scores uh, by premiering Hollywood yeah, and uh, it also marks the film debut of one of the uh, one of the movies uh, finest actors uh, two time Academy Award uh, winner Melvin Douglas and features uh, Boris Karloff in a in a dim wait a minute dimly com in a um, in a dandy comedy, but both sumptuous and snappy with very uh, suggestive plots, twists, and directions with uh, with the uh, versatile Melvin Douglas tonight or never uh, is a deductible pre-code romp uh, par excellence and one, and one of the one of the things they um, one of the sexiest pictures all the time Holly reported that's back in 1931 and it's photochemically preserved by UCLA film and our television archives from a 35 mm uh, 35 mm nitrate uh, nitrate original picture and soundtrack negative in cooperation with Mary Pickford Company laboratory services by YMC laboratories photochemical preservation funded by La Bien Biennale di Venezia 
Digital Mastering completed at Roundabout Entertainment Incorporated. And there's the bonus. The bonus is a commentary track by, by Mick LaSalle, author and film critic. Linear notes by, pic, uh, by a pictorial booklet by Richard Barnes. Writer, historian, and commentator. Poster and gallery. Now this has a um, this has a this has a little booklet. You see, talks about the movie. Yeah, it talks about the movie. And um, here's the inside. And it has a outside of the D Blu-ray. It has a it has a picture inside here, like a poster. Now, what I'm going to do is to um, see the movie and and review to review it how I felt about it. So I will see you after the picture. I uh, saw the movie last night. I watched it, and uh, I want to say it was one of the best Gloria Swanson pictures I ever had made in the early 30s. And in the commentary, they had explained that the commentator, I saw it again in the commentation, the commentator claimed that um, Ferdinand Gottschalk, who played her piano teacher, was supposed to be playing a gay character. And when I first saw it without the comment, I wasn't even aware he was playing a gay character. Maybe an elderly man. But there was a scene where she wanted to talk to him about what love was. And he was saying she, it's better to be loved than to love. And, and he said that he was a man and he loved and she laughed at him for some reason. I didn't realize what it was all about. And... Um, um, and, um, oh yeah, and here's another tidbit, uh, in the 20s, uh, when Gloria Swanson got actually pregnant, she went to New York City to, uh, get an illegal abortion, secret illegal abortion, uh, disguised as, uh, as a, as, as your average operation. Uh, anyway, as I said, she disguised it as a normal operation. Uh, but this what has happened. Uh, when she was going to Paris on a work holiday to get, pick up the dresses uh, to be in the film that Coco Canal was, was saying she made, uh, was making for the film, uh, she uh, met an uh, Irish playboy named Mike Farmer and they had a little tete-a-tete. -tete. But guess what? She got pregnant again, accidentally. And uh, they cited as secretly married, but did she realize her divorce from Marquise de la Fay was not final? So she, she went back to finish the picture in California, and she, and she noticed her dresses weren't fitting because of her pregnancy. So they put a special girdle in her that pushed her stomach down a bit so it would fit. But when the divorce final, it became final, uh, they got remarried again, and they had a daughter. But, as I said before, this is a very, very, very good classic. Um, it's about confusion and surprise. Uh, Gloria Swanson is a, is, a, is a fairly good opera singer, but she's not getting, she's not drawing enough emotions, and because of her stuffy old count boyfriend, and then she sees this guy hanging down there, and she thinks it's a gigolo, and she decides to kind of spy on him. And um, and it turns out he, she hangs around Allison Skipworth, who thinks that he hired her, hired him, him, hired him, and um, and she becomes curious about it, and then she finds out where he lives and tries to visit him and is not too sure and then uh the next day she sings a lot better like they did do something 
and she gave him uh, her um, necklace or something like that. And um, it turns out later on that she's falling in love with him and she wants him to give up his gigolo life. But it turns out, surprise, he, has, he was an uh, impresario in disguise. And Allison Skipworth was his aunt. And that's what the comedy was about in, 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 in Tonight or Never. And um, as I said, it was the best. It was the it was the best classic film for 1931. Um, she retired from motion pictures in 34 because Music in the Air bombed. And here's another interesting tidbit: when it was on Broadway in 19 early 1931, David Belasco's last production. This is what the commentator said. Uh, it was Melvin Douglas and Helen Gahagan, which they later married during the production. But another irony is that later on she had run against Richard Nixon for the Senate, and and she uh, she uh, she applied or she she uh, applied uh, for a job at Pi for acting job in in uh, Pioneer Pictures for a three strip Technicolor feature they're going to put her in. But what they did is they used her for three strip Technicolor uh, uh, test. You can see it on YouTube. They found it in some vault somewhere, all put together. Um, but um, like I said, this originally had uh, the wife of Melvin Douglas. Um, and then uh, there's there's another actor in there. Um, let me see. Excuse me. I know that Wal Burton Gamble played Count von Gr Count Albert von Grunach. Mm. Oh yeah, a young J. Carroll Nash showed up playing a radio announcer. I forgot to mention that. And uh, Boris Karloff plays a very fin friendly butler. He was making Frankenstein at this time too. Um. And Robert Krieg, he's noted to playing different butlers, and he, he plays um, um, Gloria Swanson's butler. Gloria Swanson's butler. But as I said before, you probably saw it on Serial Midnight, and I decided to make my own review out of it. I like that show too, but this is really a good, if you're a fan of classic films, this is, this is pretty good, and it was released by... Um, Samuel Goldwyn, that a year earlier did the two strip Technicolor Whoopee, and uh, would later do the Goldwyn Follies of 1938. Very, very excellent, good picture. And uh, if you like this, uh, if you like this um, review, please like, comment, and subscribe. Even if you don't like it, express a viewpoint. So I'll be encouraged to do more stuff. So, this is Mike, your reviewer of Blu-ray and DVD film classics. Bye.